Hello. Here we are. Four seeds. I'm so glad that you're here. Seven minute seed. I am Pastor Kate. I'm glad that you're here. Let's see if I can pull that off. There it is. Pastor Kate from RootBible.com. The Lord put on my heart to do seven minute seed because most moms have seven minutes, right? And when we have seven minutes to fill up with seed, we're able then to give out to our families better than we had before because it will be coming from the seed of the Word of God. It won't be coming from our carnal or fleshly nature or the way that we've been taught to do things from others, right? So I'm coming to you. I said from RootBible.com, we just started a new series. I'm going to see. It's called The Real You. I say series. It's also um, a semester, so it'll be two months long. And the kids get a completion certificate in the mail after, and it's completely free. We also have adult classes for this. The real you. Such an important message, especially in what is happening around us. It's always an important message to know who you really are. But I'm going to put that up again. In today's current timing, you know what I mean, what's going on, uh, for it to actually um, affect us, to know who we really are in Christ, is more important than Ever, how he sees us, the real us, not affected by the going ons of the world or the changes that are happening around us. So let's, uh, let's kind of give you a clue. That's what we're talking about today. So uh, let's get started. Let's put seven minutes on the countdown. I'm so glad that you are here. Here we go. All right. Maybe. Yes, maybe. There it is. Okay, seven minutes on the countdown. We're talking about how God sees you. This is one of the biggest things I can find that holds people back. When they see that you are seeing yourself as Christ sees you, they see you different because they've only known you after the flesh or after the carnal nature. But once you see yourself as Christ sees you, you're no longer affected by people only seeing you naturally or carnally because you draw all of your identity from the root. Now, as moms, as dads, as parents, as friends, as spouses, this is then once we root and know who we are in Christ, we develop that root in others. Today, particularly, we're talking about warped perception of self. So you see that reflected in when I was young, I watched one show, one show, an Oprah show, Uh, And and she was doing a, I was at a friend's house. She was doing an interview on anorexia and bulimia and um, being ridiculous teenagers that were not in Christ. We did not know the Lord. Uh, We were like, oh, we can do that. And we tried it and it ended up being um, instantly you let in that demonic spirit that allows you to twist what you see and see the demon doesn't, uh, the demonic realm, the dominion of death and destruction doesn't wait for you. Like the, the Lord says, you come to me, you'll find life. They don't wait. So we were like, oh, let's try it. That'll be fun. Silly, ridiculous 14 year olds. And um, that ended up, uh, that started rather a, f- a five year journey of having a warped perception of myself physically, uh, mentally. It built on one that was established from my childhood that I knew no better but to see myself that way. Um, I was referred to as a drippy faucet. I asked questions I knew the answer to to get um, unhealthy um, attention. I didn't consider it unhealthy. I wanted attention. But um, instead of giving attention, they would uh, throw nicknames on it. And we can tend to do that in in our flesh when our kids are acting a certain way. Um, Don't be annoying to me. I know you're thinking, I would never say that, and yet you say it. You know, like, stop it. That's being annoying. They hear through the filter, I am annoying, right? So learning to change how we see ourselves allows us to help others change how they see themselves. And the only way to truly change that is in Christ Jesus, by seeing what God sees through Christ. He no longer sees us after the flesh. He doesn't want us to see after the flesh. He doesn't want us to see others after the flesh. He says, I want want you to see no thing out any longer after the flesh. That seems pretty clear to me. That means we need to be like our father, speaking the end from the beginning. When it comes to ourselves, I am mighty in Christ. I am set apart. I have the mind of Christ. I say what he says and do what he says do. 
I am peaceful and kind. You were speaking the end from the beginning. I don't feel that way, maybe. I haven't started living that way, maybe. That's who he says he is. I'm putting my roots deep in that. What does that look like in reflection to, say, our kids? I'll give you an idea. I have a four-year-old. Maybe if you listen to these, you've heard of this before. Her uh, carnality is raging at this point. I still believe she's an unredeemed toddler. She has not officially accepted Christ and know and knows him as his own, although we talk about him often. Uh, she has not committed to him. In fact, I just felt a nudge that that may be a conversation we have tonight. I think she's there where she understands that and she sees how we live. So um, there is a tendency, she's my first girl, to get incredibly easily annoyed uh, with her high peach, high pitched screams, her uh, tendency to want to whine, her um, her oh, poor me like um, victim mentality as as the little girl and two brothers, and so the, it stirs up a, a carnal nature of me that would be easy to respond and start to lead her down a wrong path of self image or how God sees her, the real her. Right. So then I go, Okay, Lord, I needed you to see the real me. I want to see others the way you see them. Tell me what you see in her. And that's what I'll I'll do. And so I did this a long time ago with my boys. I don't know if this is going to come across clearly. If you're listening to the podcast, I'm sorry, I'm holding up a frame. And I put my boys names in the frame. And then I go to the Lord and the scriptures with the Lord, I go to the scriptures and write out you know, before they were born, I prayed about what to name them. That is calling them something. And I would receive from the Lord what to call them. You see that all throughout the Bible. And then I put their name at the top and I find out what their name means. Listen to the Lord and go to the scriptures to define how God sees them. So that from the very beginning, when we run into issues and we do run into issues, when things come up and are tough, I ask them to go read that and remind themselves of who they are. So I just wrote one up for our toddler and it is this. The opposite of what we see a lot of times. She is courteous and overflowing with kindness that brings joy everywhere she goes. She is ready for anything for it is strength in Christ which empowers her to do everything that God leads her to do. Her trust is in the Lord and her faith is in his promises and it will never be shaken. She speaks truth with boldness and the Holy Spirit uses her to say what God is saying. She loves God, loves people, loves nature, animals, and plants, and is fruitful in caring for them all to honor the Father. She knows who she is, is full of discernment and solutions, as she sees what others cannot yet see. Willow loves her family, is great, a great friend, and never allows her emotions to dominate her life. Wouldn't you want someone to speak that over you when the flesh nature rises up, when mistakes uh, seem so large, there's no way back? Even when little things come up that the enemy would want you to take seed and identity in, and indeed it is not. We must start speaking the end from the beginning. That is who our father is. And we can do that in our homes, with our spouses, our kids. We certainly want to do it with ourselves. Sometimes it's easier to project his love onto others than it is to receive it for ourselves. But I will guarantee you, moms and dads, spouses, you can never see someone the way God sees them until you first see yourself that way. That your roots are established in him, that your emotions, that your feelings, that your flesh and carnal memories of how you reacted or acted are gone and totally surrendered to him. It's only then that he can reveal who others are through his eyes because you see yourself there first. All right. I thank you for for joining us in 7-Minute Seed. I will be back next time. Uh, We try to do seven a week for seven minutes, so make sure you tune in and be built up. I'll pray over you now, Father. Show them the end from the beginning. Reveal red flags where they're depending on what they see and not what you say. Father, help them guide their homes into an understanding of the real them, which is rooted in Christ alone, that they pull nothing they need for life from any of the carnal nature 
or the dead nature, but they pull everything of who they are and who they've created, been created to be straight from you, the root, Christ Jesus, Father. Thank you that you've provided a way, that you speak to us, guide us, lead us, and fill us with your life that we may release it everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I thank you for joining me. I'll see you for the next seven minutes. Until then, be blessed.